Good morning. My name is Crystal Botha. I'm the Director of Family Ministries here at First Pres Tequesta. This morning, I'd like to share with you our scripture readings. The first comes from the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Listen now for God speaking to you. The plot against Daniel. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, stationed throughout the whole kingdom and over them three presidents, including Daniel, to these the satraps gave account so that the king might suffer no loss. Soon Daniel distinguished himself above all the other presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. So the presidents and the satraps tried to find grounds for complaint against Daniel in connection with the kingdom, but they could find no grounds for complaint or any corruption because he was faithful and no negligence or corruption could be found in him. The men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. So the presidents and satraps conspired and came to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that whoever prays to anyone, divine or human, for 30 days except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and interdict. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not too long ago, I was sitting on the couch one day and Hannah came up to me and she was being so sweet. She crawled up into my lap and she snuggled with me and she gave me a kiss on the cheek and my heart just exploded with love for her. And I whispered to her, I love you so much. To which she replied, can I have a cookie? And it was at that moment that I realized what Hannah's true intentions were. Everything she was doing up to that moment was all about getting that cookie. Today, as we begin our sermon series on the sixth chapter of Daniel and the eighth chapter of Romans, we meet Daniel in the middle of his story. And before we meet him here, we know that he is this Jewish prophet who was uh, exiled to Babylon. So he's living in a place a foreign country with no network, no way to succeed, but Daniel begins to rise up in the ranks because he has become known as a trustworthy and honest and integritous person. And as he amasses more and more power and he gets the attention of the king, 
Daniel starts to make enemies, people who want what Daniel has. And so they devise a plan because they see Daniel, a man who has become who he was because of his honesty, and they just didn't buy it. They said, there's something about Daniel that we need to find. And so they went to search for any type of corruption in his life, any place where he has lied or cheated or has stolen in an effort to bring him down. Now, I think what they're doing is pretty smart because I think it's human nature to have some type of ulterior motives. Just as my daughter loves me and snuggles with me and gives me a kiss on the cheek all so she could get a cookie, I think we always struggle with different types of, of motivations in our lives. And it's that core motivation. We all have that one thing that gets us out of bed and that, that motivates us to do what we do and to shape our values and our priorities. And sometimes that one thing could be wealth. We do everything so that we can be as wealthy as possible. Or that one thing could be power or influence. And every decision we make is an effort to amass that kind of power or influence. Perhaps for some of us, that one thing could be comfort. We do what we do so that we can stay safe and secure. But what we see is that when we make the things of this world the most important thing in our lives, if, if these earthly things that allure us become our number one priority, we really sell ourselves short. In the eighth chapter of Romans, Paul begins to explain to the church and teach to the church the benefits of following Christ. And he begins this chapter by saying how amazing Jesus really is and how following Christ lets us leave the things of the past, the things that die whenever our time on earth dies, and to instead follow Jesus Christ who offers us a relationship that transcends the, the bounds of our own mortality and transcends the brokenness of this world and the brokenness in us and around us. Paul encourages us to follow this God who gives us a better way in Jesus Christ. And it's when we follow him that we can begin to shape a life of honesty and integrity. Now, when the people who were going after Daniel started to dig deep, all they found was a man who loved God more than anything. There is something about Daniel because in him was this faith that was so strong that it was more important than anything in his life. It was more important than wealth. It was more important than power. It was more important than being safe. Above all, Daniel sought to follow God. Now, if all of us were honest with ourselves, what is the number one priority in our lives? Are we like Daniel who follows God, or are we like others who might find something else? No matter where we are, God gives us an opportunity to come back, to make God number one in our lives, to make God that thing that gets us up in the morning, that number one thing that drives us, that number one thing that leads us in every decision that we make. Over the next four weeks, we're going to follow Daniel's story, and we're going to see where his faith in God takes him. And we're going to see how his faith and his integrity uh, leads him to some difficult places in life, but it also carries him through those moments. So for all of us who are in different spots in our walk with God, all of us are in different spots in our, our walk in life. And some of us are enjoying life right now and blessings abound. And some of us are having a really hard time. No matter where we are, all of us have an opportunity to choose God first. To follow Christ first. And if we follow Christ alone, he will never lead us astray. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, who shows us the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray that no matter where we are in life, we would put him first in our lives and that he would guide every single decision that we make so that as we strive to be people of faith and people of integrity, that our character would shine through, that our faith would shine through, and that it would bring us to a place of 
healing and restoration, but that it would also bring us to a place where we can share your good news with others. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for giving us each other, and we pray that you continue to lead us and guide us towards your son, Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen.